So Jesse, I love the way the TV show. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I knew it would be so easy. I know. <laughs> hey guys, it's Shirley. And Jesse. And we just finished making over the front area of my studio, and now we're going to tackle the entry. All right. Okay, but we've got a unique set of challenges. Take a look at what this area looked like when I moved in. As you can see, it's very narrow. We've got really tall white walls, which there's nothing wrong with it. I think we can doll it up. Um, the owner left a few little furniture pieces here, which I think we could repurpose and use. Uh, but I think we're gonna have to go with a whole different theme than what we have in the front. Like what you think? tropical plants. Ooh. I think that would be a, like a really bright welcome, warm welcome into the studio. Kind of like our personalities. Very right? colorful. And colorful <laughs> there you go. Colorful personalities. We're going to do three sections here and I'm going to show you how you can plant plants in little clusters. And I'm going to show you how to maximize a really narrow space by using just the perfect touches. And I think we need to start in the back All right. because that's where your largest elements go. Wow. Always. Let's go get the stuff. Let's do it. All right. Would you mind, Jesse, just putting our Michaela tree right over there? Absolutely. That's a beautiful tropical tree. And here I'm putting our papyrus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a grouping. You can put this right over at the bottom there. A little vignette of plants, a cluster of plants. And I'm trying to use some of the taller things like the tree over towards the end of our entry. This will look beautiful right here. Another papyrus. And I'm just putting together, how about some of our canna lilies? This is really pretty because what I want to do is I want to allude to like a little water garden. And you always find papyrus near water. And you also find canna lilies near water. I'm going to put that right on that side. That looks really cool. One of the things you want to consider is this. Even though I planted out front, a beautiful drought tolerant garden and they were all in containers. I used a specific type of soil, Edna's potting soil for the drought tolerant garden because it's got yucca extract in it and that helps to re-moisten the soil which tends to dry out in hot hot weather. Now I have a begonia in a shade garden and this has more of an acidic soil need. So I've got a special blend if you wouldn't mind opening that up. I want to pot this up and I'm using a special azalea, camellia, and gardenia soil mix, which is acidic in nature. One of the things to consider is, do I have the right plant in the right spot? Is it for shade? Is it for sun? Do I have the right type of soil? And that is critically important. We're gonna bring in a tall vertical element, which is gonna end up being our featured point. I know what you You mean. know what I'm talking about. So Jesse and I just finished waterproofing this table. It's really an exterior table. So I want you guys to look for that video. It's gonna come up right after this one. It's how to waterproof an interior table. And this is it. And I love it because it's a vertical table. It's taller than it is wide. I want you to notice something, guys. Whenever you're designing any space, always look from the entry to see how things look. When you walk in, the first thing you see is this rounder. And we've got some corners here that I'd like to soften. So I'm gonna take advantage of these big, bold leaves. And I'm gonna put this right here. As you can see, it softens. And now I'm just gonna fill it with other shade-loving plants and start the tropical garden. I'm balancing draping there, draping here. Good. On to the next section. So even though I have a shade garden here, this little corner gets a lot of light. So I thought it would be the perfect place to put this little cactus arrangement in this gorgeous glistening silver. And if you watch the front makeover, you notice that I used a lot of silver plants. It's always important to tie in different areas of your yard. So in the front, I featured a lot of gray and silver and we have it here. It looks really, really pretty. We didn't put the begonia earlier, but we're doing it now. And what I want to do is add a second beautiful wax begonia on this side. So we kind of balance things out. Okay. 
And then, if you wouldn't mind giving me the hibiscus, we're gonna use this old stool. But I don't care, because we're gonna cover it. All Let's right. do it. There's nothing as tropical as a hibiscus. Coleus, what I love about this is that it doesn't really need any flowers, but just by itself, just like that, it brings so much tropical color to our little shade garden. Now, these are Tropicana cannas, purple leaves, gorgeous red color. Put that right there. That's gonna grow nice and tall. So I'm trying to create a little vignette, a little cluster here with depth. So we have our hibiscus that's gonna to continue to grow slowly. We've got our canna in the back, coleus in the front that's gonna spill, and our color. And it's looking really good. We're gonna take advantage of these tall walls. Jesse just finished screwing a bracket up, and we're gonna put this gorgeous draping off those vines. We just have a few other finishing touches and we're gonna go grab them. This is a great decorative touch. Staghorn ferns, very tropical, but usually they're hung on wood planks. But I don't really have a lot of wood here. I have wrought iron. So I just found a, uh, I think this is a banana holder and I hung it. Look for my video coming up on how to hang your staghorn fern just like this. Believe it or not, there's these great rail planters that you can just hang right there. Maybe you can help me stabilize yeah, it. Check that out. Just one thing, we've got everything done, but the top of our vertical table looks a little bit empty. Yeah, it does look empty, doesn't it? Right? Okay, well I have a surprise using a very special new product uh, for a hanging plant, except we're gonna actually train it to go upwards instead of down. Huh. And uh, I'm gonna go get it right now. All right. All right, Jesse, just put it right there All like right. a crowning jewel. I love this, guys. This is called the Scroll Trellis, and it's a new product. You can train your vines to go up in an orb shape. What do you think, guys? Do you like that beautiful finial? All right, I think we did another fine job. I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. Me too, it definitely has more color. Yeah, we maximized this narrow space. And now it really looks like a place I want to come to work to. I hope you guys got some nice tips from it. Please watch us. Jesse and I are gonna be back for Eden Makers, and you're gonna learn a lot about how to make the most of your outdoor space. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time. Let's go. All right. All right, and that's a cut. Cut, cut, cut. All right. What do you think, guys?